G'day day everyone, welcome back to another edition of Gov's Hero Review Videos. We are continuing today to look at some more of the past Legendary Heroes of the Month. Specifically today we're going to take a look at the 5 star Legendary Yellow Heroine, Yalani, the Unyielding Vindicator. So, Yalani has been in the game for quite a while now. She was first introduced as the Featured Hero of the Month back in November 2020. Today, however, you can only summon Yalani from the Manor of Legends portal, which rolls around once every four weeks, um, and it doesn't have some of the better odds in the game. It's pretty horrendous when you're summoning for specific heroes. So, to take a look at that, we do have our portal odds here. So, we've got a 0.9% chance of getting a non-featured hero of the month, and a 1% chance to draw one of the two featured heroes of the month. So, to put that into perspective, if you were to go into this portal and you were to do 100 summons, you would have a 63.4% probability of getting one of the two featured heroes of the month. You would also have a 59.5% probability of getting any one of the many unfeatured heroes. If you're going for a specific hero, you would only have a 39.4% chance of getting one of the two a specific copy of the featured heroes and just a 2.6% probability of getting a specific unfeatured hero of the month. So not the greatest odds in the world and those odds will diminish further as more heroes are added to the portal over time. In terms of her artwork, I'm going to have to go and flip again, but that's all right. This is Yolani's artwork. So uh, she is the Unyielding Vindicator. I don't really know how too much of that plays in, but I guess we've got some of those sort of um, Islander tribal patterns, I guess, going on with, I don't know, I don't know if it's really truly Islander or or what the ancestry is, but we've got some tribal tattoos going on. We've got a nice curvy blade there. Um, yeah, so that's kind of our artwork. Feel free to pause it if you wish. Um, but otherwise, I've got some scrolling to do to get back to where she is in the roster. Uh, so while we go looking for her, we can talk about the family bonus uh, because there is none. Um, unfortunately, SGD still does not have any uh, family bonus for old heroes of the month um, at the time of this review. Maybe sometime down the track they will add something to the game, but at this point in time there is nothing. In terms of her personal stats, Yolani comes in with 681 attack, 668 defense, and 1,459 HP. So there is a little bit of a skew going on from both of these stats into the HP stat. Uh, it is a little bit elevated, and both of her attack and defense are slightly reduced. But it's not massive uh, in the scheme of things. It is also worth pointing out that her team power is quite a bit lower uh, sorry, her total power is qu quite a bit lower than some of the new heroes. Uh, so as an example, you've got Topaz, who's got over 740 power, um, compared to uh, Yolani here, who's got just 684. So there is a bit of a discrepancy in terms of the total stat distribution, um, which is just power creep in the end. Her charge speed is set to 50 speed, which is average and requires 10 tiles to charge or 5 ghosted tiles. Uh, the speed break does need to get up to 58 speed, uh, which uh, obviously requires plus 8. This can't be done using weapons alone. Uh, in yellow, we've got two real speed options. So you've got the plus 6 Ragnarok Vantage, which is a 5-star gun, and you've got the plus 7 Triss Vector, uh, which is a 4-star gun. So... To get that single speed break, you do need to combine the 2% charge generation node with her tree, uh, and doing that is enough to get the charge break with either of the two speed weapons. So the class node on her emblem tree is very relevant if you're wanting to get that single charge break, but even then you still have to combine it with the plus six or plus seven speed guns. On the topic of her class, Yolani is a member of the Assault class, which grants her the chance to wound the enemy by applying 60% of the damage done by a normal attack, i.e. tiles or slash attacks, over 5 turns. The wound damage can stack infinitely with itself, so you can have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15 copies of it uh, going at the same time. And because it's based on normal damage, or total normal, da normal damage, it can actually be quite a considerable amount of damage. So if you take a tile against a war machine that's doing, you know, 5,000 damage, 60% of that is 3,000 damage. So it's doing 3,000 additional damage over 5 turns. You get, you know, 4 or 5 copies of that going, you've got an extra 12,000 
15,000 damage that's going on to that war machine. So it can be a very beneficial effect when you've got a high enough color stacking opportunity that's happening. Um, there is also the benefit that it counts as bleed damage, so it can trigger the bleed burst on heroes like Hatchet or Iquani. By way of an actual emblem path, uh, let's flip over to my roster and we can take a quick looky-see at someone. So I would personally be going in an attack path to further enhance her damage output. So what this looks like on a talent tree is we would be going and picking up the attack nodes at each branch in the path. On the cases where we get to choose between the two, it is a little bit of a common sense approach. So the healing node is useless. So we are going to keep picking up the attack nodes on the other side of the tree. And as I mentioned, the plus 19 speed node is quite important if you are wanting to charge Rakiolani. So in terms of an emblem path, that would be sort of the, the route that we would be following. We'd be going that, um, that attack path and picking up, as I mentioned, that speed node at the end in order to get the single charge break, if you're wanting to get it, that is. Uh, heading back to the portal and we'll do a little bit of scrolling and we can discuss her special skill. So her special skill is titled Strength in Numbers and at level 10 skill and 50 charge speed, it will deal 195% damage to the target with an additional 38% damage per each yellow tile on the board to a maximum of 304% additional damage. It will then also provide a 38% charge generation buff to the caster for three turns. And that's it. Just two lines really to her special skill. There's not a lot going on. So let's kick it off, I guess, with the damage, seeing as it's 50-50, which way we want to go. So damage, as always, it's easy enough to calculate, but it's difficult to compare on it because there's so many factors that feed into that calculation. So I tend to just compare heroes based on their attack power, which is their attack stat multiplied by the percentage in their special skill. In the case of Yolani, that comes out as being a base attack power of 1,328. So that's taking the 681 by the 195% in her skill. That is just an attack power per tile, as we see, of 133, which is not good, right? It's right down the very, very, very bottom of that table of snipers. There's even worse than Nutmeg, who is very similar in her skill execution, where she's doing damage based on the tiles on the board so not great but it does scale up a little bit based on how many tiles are still on the board so if we take the midpoint uh, that comes out as an attack power per tile of 236 if we take the maximum damage it's an attack power of 340 so there is quite a lot of difference between the worst and the best case scenario now admittedly we are using still the number of tiles to charge her skill, not reflecting on the fact that to get the maximum damage, we would actually need 18 tiles to charge and get that damage, not 10. So if we were to factor that in, it obviously drops off a fair bit. Um, but yeah, anyway, if, as I said, if we did factor that in, the real tile damage uh, is 188 attack power per tile for the maximum and the midpoint requires 14 tiles total so it's 169 so there's still improvements on her base damage but when you factor it in as a real attack power per tile it's not that great like it really isn't it jumps her from worst spot up to like 15th in the best case scenario so generally speaking i don't like these heroes where their skill is linked to the number of tiles on the board there's not many of them and there are very 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 few instances where they actually work as a damage dealing hero for the most part they're just lackluster in the extreme for their damage so moving on from the damage, there is only one other part of her special skill, which is the charge generation or a plus 38% charge generation buff for herself. It is a pretty good buff, generally speaking, as it increases the charge she gains from her, like to herself from all sources of, tile, of charge. So it can come from tiles, it can come from skills, it can come from minions, buffs, so on and so forth. The downside is that it only applies to herself. There's no wider team explanation, uh, sorry, um, effect or impact from her skill. 
If we wanted to dive into a really technical explanation, um, I'm going to do that. If you want to skip over that, just probably skip forward like a minute or two minutes uh, and we'll pick up on the other side. So the technical explanation for how this buff actually works is it affects the charge that she gains um, from the different stores. So instead of gaining one charge unit from a tile, she instead will gain 1.38 charge units per tile. The hero's charge speed sets how many charge units they actually need. So the 50 charge speed will dictate how many she needs. In the case of Yolani, at 50 speed, she needs exactly 10 charge units or 10 tiles to complete. With the speed buff active, she gets a 1.38 uh, charge units per tile. So instead of needing 10 tiles to charge, she needs only 8 tiles to charge because 8 tiles will generate 11.04 charge units. 7 tiles gets pretty damn close. It comes out as 9.66 effective charge units worth of of charge so it's not quite enough but it is pretty good so ultimately the buff on its own is not enough to get you a triple break but it is enough to get you the double break you can get the triple break quite easily if you just throw on a plus six speed weapon or plus seven speed gun for example so yeah there is obviously therefore an improvement to her attack power per tile if you fire her and manage to recharge while she's under the charge generation buff so Overall, for Yolani, I find her a little bit lacking, all right? There's only two aspects to her special skill. One of them, the damage is, it's too situational. And to get the higher ends of the damage output, you really need a massive excess of yellow tiles on the board. I don't really know if I would, like, if I had the power to change things, I don't really know what would make Yolani better without completely overhauling her. I mean, the obvious thing to do is to decouple her damage from the tiles. Just give her damage, make her a damage dealer. The other thing is maybe I might expand it to giving the charge generation buff to herself and nearby allies. That might give her some usefulness, but ultimately the real killer for her as a special skill is the fact that all of her damage is linked to tiles like it, it is fully three-fifths 60 percent of her damage is locked behind having yellow tiles on the board i mean that just you can't work with that in most situations so for yolani's grading i when she came out i really wanted to like her but i just have never been able to bring myself to level her because i just can't see a use for her so for her grading i am going to give her a d plus for raid and war attacks for war machines i'm going to give her a flat d grade and for eventing i'm going to give her a d minus for raid and war defenses i am going to she i i'll give her a c grade for defense situations she is not a great option she can work because people tend to stack purple heroes and therefore make matches towards purple tiles when they see a yellow hero on defense. So you're, they're less likely to use the yellow tiles and therefore you're more likely to get the higher ends of her damage output. But as I said, not a great option. We're sort of talking a flank or a wing and even then like there's better options in both those positions. In the tournament settings, uh, in Bloody Battle, uh, I'm going to give her a D plus on attack and a C grade for defense. For buff boosters, I'm going to give her a D plus on attack and a C grade on defense. And then finally, for charged attack, she does get a speed improvement, uh, going from 50 speed up to 65. So I'm going to give her a C grade for charge attack attacks and a C, bl C plus for the defense aspect of the charge attack tournaments. So overall, that comes out as being a D plus for her overall attack grade and a C for her overall defense grade. And that pretty much concludes the content that I have for this review of Yolani. Um, I apologize that it is not more positive. Um, I do, as I said, I, I'd like to love her as a hero, um, just aesthetically, I guess. And also, I don't know, at the time she was kind of cool, but I just can't get behind her. But as I said, these are just my personal thoughts and opinions on these heroes. Um, I do love hearing your thoughts and feedback, so please do jump down to the comments section. Leave me a note. I try to read and reply to as many of you as I can. 
If you did find the video to be useful and helpful, uh, feel free to like it, subscribe to my channel and all of that. But most importantly, share the video around because chances are if this sort of thing is useful for yourself, it's also going to be useful to the people you play with as well. Thank you once again for tuning in and joining me for this review of Yolani. I do hope that I will see you again soon in another video, but until then, good luck, stay safe, and happy gaming. Cheers. Bye.